This video is Aircraft Radio Navigation Basics. First, a quick disclaimer. I'm not a certified flight instructor, and I'm making this as an information-only video. Now, if I had my way, I would prefer to fly under visual meteorologic conditions all the time. VFR is the easiest way to fly. You pretty much follow the roads, and they get you to the town that you want to get to, and you can see the airport from a long way away. However, that is not reality. And while most of the time, we can fly under visual flight rules, just like on the ground, things can get a little nasty. The only difference in your car, you gotta kinda rely on your wits. Whereas in an airplane, we have what's called IMC, or Instrument Meteorologic Conditions. For that, we use IFR, Instrument Flight Rules, where we use some of the instruments in the airplane. Not those kind of instruments, but radio guidance instruments. We even have GPSs that are specially designed for aircraft use. They contain charts and navigational aids to help us get where we want to go. One of the most common navigational aids is the VORTAC, which means VHF Omnidirectional Range Beacon and a Tactical Air Navigation System Beacon. This tells us where we are in relation to the VOR as well as how far away from the VOR we are. Another system is the NDB or non-directional beacon. They look like this. The two telephone poles hold up the wire antenna. Typically, you find these on the outer markers. This particular one, called Cookie, spelled K-O-O-K-Y, is a medium range NDB ADF, which is good for up to about 100 miles, depending on conditions. Then we have the ILS, which consists of the localizer and the glide slope. The ILS is the instrument landing system. These are right near the runway. The ILS makes sure we stay straight down the runway. And the glide slope is adjusted to about three degrees. So we have a nice easy descent to the runway. A VOR on a chart looks something like this. In this case, this is a Salem VOR. The frequency is 114.3 and it tells you what Morse code you should hear in your headset. And this is the ILS or instrument landing system. If you fly it correctly, it's like flying a pipe. They typically have an outer marker and a middle marker. The VOR and the ILS do share similar frequencies. The easiest way to tell the difference between the two is VORs are always on even kilohertz and ILSs are always on odd kilohertz. The NDBs typically have less notable markings on a chart. They're usually just a dot with something like this around the outside and their typical frequency is between 190 kilohertz and 535 kilohertz. So let's put this into practice. We're leaving the Badger VOR and heading up to the Green Bay VOR. That puts us on the one degree radial out of Badger. When we get about a third of the way up, change to the Oshkosh VOR, but we stay on our course. When we get to this point here, which is 65 degrees from Oshkosh, or 245 degrees from us, that's when we need to make our descent into Appleton. Taking a look at the approach chart, we're going to look at the top half first. And there's Cookie. From the point we're going to turn off from that radial, we're going to turn about a 343 three degrees. And that's going to get us right into the ILS at Appleton. We should fall into the ILS at about 2,900 feet. And our angle should be 298 degrees. When we hit the outer marker, we should be at 2,700 feet. And then it's a nice easy glide down to the runway six and a half miles away. So let's see if it works. And just that easy, we're at Appleton. I hope you found this video informative, and thank you for watching.